In tutorial 6, we'll create rows of text and show you how the auto hide, the auto spacing, and auto pauses work when we animate those rows of text. Now, I've already uh, constructed this scene with eight rows of text along with the animation. And what I want to do is just offset the animation of each row. And when you move the animation from time zero like this, you will also want to set each animation as hold first frame. Hold first frame which prevents the object being displayed before the animation starts. Now that the effect in is complete, let's copy that transition and rename it as our update in. The only object we don't need is the headline group, so I'll easily take that out of the update. Now we'll add another transition and select Update Out. Now control click all the layers in the scene graph and add those to the Update Out. We could have added all of these to a group and just added the group, but I want to do an offset animation of each row so that I have to add all the rows. With them all selected, let's bring the alpha down to 0 at frame 15. Uh, and then make sure that they're all at 100% at frame 0. Now, as we did before, let's slide them all down by 3 frame intervals and flag them as hold first frame. Now select the update in and move all the objects down so they come on a little after the first scene fades off. And we're going to record that scene to 25. Now let's set the auto hide for each row. I'm just showing the last two rows but they all have been done. So auto hide the bar when there is no text in its corresponding template. And re-record the scene to 25 and let's play it to air to see how it looks. Now recall it again and let's delete the last four rows of text and then control play it to error. Now you have a nice scene with updates but it does not display the empty bars where there was no text. Okay using the same idea let's create a different scene using 3D text and the blue bar. Make sure all the text properties are set and for this one I am selecting size to fit for both width and height. Now copy the group and paste it down four more times then move the rows into the top group. Let's rename these rows and the text so it is easier to distinguish one from the other. Now select all five row groups and put them in another group. On the right of the screen you will see a new properties called auto spacing. With the group selected, click on enable auto spacing for this group. And it will automatically space out those five rows of text. You then have to define the spacing area by either moving the position left or right and top or bottom or you can select the green dotted line and actually move the line to get the correct position with your mouse. We'll show what the bottom part of the menu does a little later. Now you can change the horizontal or vertical position as well by clicking top, middle or bottom. Let's just type the rows of text to display different text and record it to scene 26. Now let's create some animation to these layers. I am uh, selecting the five rows of text plus the headline group and right click add transition and select effect in and selected. Now I'll add a simple animation to the headline group. So I'm going to add a keyframe at the 20 frame mark.
and then move to the first of the timeline and push the row off the top. And as always, modify the end keyframe as an ease in. Now move the cursor down to the one second mark and let's add a keyframe to the end of each row. And we're going to start with uh, row one at one second and do the same for each other row by moving them down another second. Now select all the rows and set to hold first frame because we want to push each row down the timeline. Okay, so again we'll start with row one and we're going to push it down to the one second mark and do the same for each additional row by moving row 2 down to the 2 second mark and so on. Now scrubbing the timeline will show that the animation looks good. Now let's add some pauses to this so the user has control when the rows are to be revealed. So at 1 second add the first pause. Now I can add the other pauses all in the same event, but by adding additional events for each pause we are going to get more flexibility. Now rename the pause as pause 1 and keep adding events for each pause that is needed and rename them. So now we have five pauses all as their own events. Now we're ready to set these for auto hide. So as before, select the group and right click and select Auto Hide. Select Row 1 from the list. So if there's no text in Row 1, then it will hide the whole group. And we'll do the same for all five rows. Now it will become apparent why I added five different events for the pauses. Let's go up to pause one. And I'm going to add auto hide to all the pauses. So in a similar way, if there's no text in the row, then, there's, then the pause is going to be turned off in the scene graph. By unchecking the pause in the scene graph, Lyric will ignore the pause. So let's see what this looks like. Recall scene 28 and play it to error. And there are five pauses which reveal the five rows of text. Now let's recall the same scene and erase the bottom two rows of text. Record to scene 29 and play it to error. Now you will see that there are only three pauses needed to reveal the three rows of text. The scene ignores the last two pauses. Now let's go back to the auto spacing as I want to adjust the spacing of the rows of text. I'm going to increase the default offset space between items so that they will space out a little more if there are fewer rows. You might not see this change unless there are fewer rows. The minimum offset between items can never be greater than the default, but in this case I want the minimum to be greater than zero, so the bars basically fit the screen when there are five of them. Re-record the scene to 29. Now let's add some more transitions. With the effect in selected, right click and select copy transition. Type in update in as the new transition. Now selecting the rows group from the scene graph and create an update out and create a simple fade down for the update out.
Now record the scene to 30. Now when we play it to the output and you see we have five pause releases, one for each row. Now recall the same scene, erase the bottom two rows of text, and record to scene 31. When we recall it and play it there, you will, you will now only have three pauses and the rows of text are separated a little more because we altered the default spacing between them. The cool thing about this scene is that you can delete any row you want and it will self-adjust accordingly. Now I'm deleting the first row and the third row and the scene still looks perfect. Okay, one more feature to this uh, is the ability to link all rows of text to size to fit. In some cases, if you need to scale the text down in the width and height on one row, you might want the rest of the text on the screen to match the size. Simply pick the arrows you want to link and set the minimum size percentage to scale it down. Now start typing in row one and add a few extra characters so the text starts to scale and watch the rest of the text on the screen start to scale as well. So the option is there for you. So in tutorial six, we went over some more auto hide, the new auto spacing, and a great way to adjust the amount of pauses in the scene. And finally, a way to easily scale all the text in the same amount.